thank you, Faisal. Uh, good evening and welcome uh, everyone to quarter one FI23 earnings call. Uh, quarter one uh, continued uh, to witness strong growth momentum in the branded generic markets led by robust India performance. Uh, the branded generic markets constituted 70% uh, of our total revenue and on an overall basis uh, grew by 15% on YOY basis. Aided by market share gain, performance of top brands and new launches, Sequentially, there is an improvement in EBITDA margin, uh, mainly led by the cost initiatives, which we had guided earlier in the previous quarter. Uh, in terms of the financial performance during the quarter, revenues were uh, 2,347 crores, up by 10% on a YOI basis. Gross margins at 71.9%, improved by 1.1% on a sequential basis. EBITDA was 742 crores, up by 3% on a YOI basis and up by 21% on a sequential basis. EBITDA margins at 31.6% improved by 2.9% on sequential basis. The other operating income includes a one-off of rupees 38 crores towards a settlement income in the US. Adjusted for this, the EBITDA is 704 crores and the EBITDA margin is 30.5%. Now I request someone to take us through uh, the India performance. Thanks, Sudhir. Uh, India revenues at 12.45 crores grew by 14%. As per AIOCD data, Torrent's uh, Q1 FI23 growth was 17% versus the IPM growth of 2%. Growth was aided by new launch momentum, robust performance of top brands, and market share gains across our focus therapies. During the quarter, Torrent added 300 MRs, bringing the total field force strength to 4,200. At the end of the quarter, Torrent has 18 brands in the top 500 of the IPM, with 11 brands more than 100 crore sales. I'll now hand over to Mr. Sanjay Gupta for the international business. Thanks, Aman. Uh, let's start with Brazil, our largest branded generics market outside of India. So Brazil revenue was at rupees 184 crores, up by 20%. Constant currency revenue was at Brazilian Reais 117 million, up by 8%. Adjusted for the discontinued tender business in the previous year, the growth rate is 10%. Our generic business in Brazil now accounts for 12% of our overall Brazilian uh, sales and is growing at a fast pace. For a branded generic business, Q1 growth came primarily from our new product launches as well as strong price increases from April onwards. IQVR's June data is indicating that Torrent's Q1 growth rate is 13%, which is in line with the overall BG market growth. With the market growth of high single digit to double digit, we expect Brazil to continue its growth momentum, backed by performance of top brands, new launches, and a new second field force in the CNS therapeutic area. Going on to Germany, uh, Germany revenues were 214 crores, were down by 18%, Constant currency revenue were Euro 26 million. Growth was adversely impacted due to the loss of high value tenders that started in February of 2022. The German generics market has become a lot more competitive due to the entrance of new players. Future growth at Torrent will come from new tender wins and new launches. We have incremental tender wins on hand which will start adding sales progressively from Q3 onwards. We have launched Q4 products in Q1 of which one of, one of them was a day one launch, and we will be further launching four products in Q2, of which we expect three of them to be day one launches. We are also taking measures to become more cost competitive to be more successful in future tenders. Lastly, for the US, US revenues were at rupees 299 crores, were up by 13%. Constant currency revenue was at 39 million, up by 7%. Revenue was, as indicated by Sudhir, positively impacted by the settlement amount received from an innovator. This was complemented by the strong performance that we are seeing from Dapson, uh, our anti-acne uh, medicine. We continue to await the US FDA's reinspection of our facilities. To conclude, our BGX markets, particularly the two largest ones, India and Brazil, remain on a strong footing and we expect the strong growth momentum to continue. We are optimistic that the initiatives undertaken should progressively revive growth in Germany uh, from Q3 onwards. Uh, Fezal, we can open the call to questions now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. 
If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Tushar Manudhane from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. So just on Germany market, uh, while recently there has been certain media news flow about shortage of medicines in that country, so uh, is this kind of a temporary shortage or you think that there is a good opportunity out here? So, uh, uh, I mean, honestly, we have not seen uh, uh, any, any impact of any shortages in Germany. Um, so from our side, uh, we've been adequately supplied and uh, we've not experienced uh, uh, a one-time bump in sales. Uh, uh, on, the, on the contrary, we've seen the German government reduce uh, reference prices. As you know, in Germany, uh, a good chunk of our business is not tender sales of our vehicles. Uh, and uh, the German government's uh, reduction in reference prices has had a negative impact on non-tender sales. So, so that is what we are seeing. Got That's it from Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Good evening. The first question is on this clarification, this 30 crore, 38 crore uh, settlement income. It's, uh, where is this sitting? Is it other operating? What is this relating to? Yeah, this is other operating from uh, Prakash. So it's basically, it's basically related to some patent settlement uh, which we've done with uh, one of the innovators. So that income is sitting in other operating income. Okay, but this is non-recurring, right? Non-recurring, non-recurring. Okay, perfect. And uh, uh, just trying to understand this R&D uh, that we are, you know, doing every quarter, every year, and I understand a large part of it is for the U.S. So. Uh, I mean, what is the filing run rate here uh, from these existing plants or we're already doing some site switches? If you could update on the R&D utilization uh, as, uh, you know, these two plants are stuck without any, you know, much from the U.S. So, uh, correct our understanding and more color would be appreciated. So, uh, in, a, in a normal year, we file about 10 to 13 uh, NDAs. Um, last year, uh, our filing rate was just five. Uh, so this year we expect the rate to pick up. Um, and uh, given what is happening with the inspections, uh, we have started filing some products from alternate sites. Uh, but this is uh, the impact will be down the road, uh, not right now, because uh, these filings will be get reviewed and then uh, you know whenever we're supposed to launch them. So I would say that we've taken uh, uh, steps to, for for future filings. But the past filings are from the facilities at Indra and Bayaj. Okay, and is there any update in terms of US FDA inspection, you know? Unfortunately, no. Uh, so, honestly, we have not heard anything. Okay, and fiscal 23 onwards, you're expecting double-digit filing again or uh, similar to 22? I mean, either double-digit or close to double-digit. Okay. And lastly, what is our current capacity utilization? As I understand, uh, you know, U.S. Uh, uh, capacity utilization from these two facilities will be low. So what is our capacity utilization and asset terms? And how do you anticipate that to improve? So all the facilities put together, we should be around 54%, uh, Prakash. Okay. Okay. And is there an expectation of US FDA resolution by end of this year? Any 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 broad plans or you know thoughts you have? Yeah, probably. I mean, and the internal understanding which we are carrying is that it should happen over the next three to four months, but can't say for uh, sure. Huh? So oh, that that's the minimum expectation. I think internally we we are guessing. So, Prakash, as you probably have seen and we are seeing also. Uh, the pace of inspections in September 2021 has been quite robust. 
and uh, so so we kind of uh, keep track of um, uh, how many and how much they are doing. So since the pace has picked up, our expectation is also risen as to uh, that they would be here sooner rather than later. But we have no direct indicator to share. Okay, lovely. And lastly, in terms of the breakup of the India growth, so very strong growth in India, uh, volume of late was very low, but I think June and for you, I think April, May has also rebounded. So what is the broad breakup here uh, for volume and price uh, for you? Yeah, so our AIOCD growth reflection is 17%. Breakup is uh, volume at 5%. Price at 9% and new products at 3%, but the price reflection is a bit of an over reflection because of a, a product mix change from last year, so there's a bit of a base effect. So maybe it would be close to 8%. So that's why there's also a bit of a gap between the AFC reflection and the internal growth. Okay. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viresh Patak from White Oak Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, for the Brazil business, 12% is uh, generic. There is zero tender now, and balance is branded generic. Is that the correct understanding? Yes, that's correct. About 88% is uh, branded generic, and 12% is generic. Like, can you share something like what a share of top brands like you give? You know, for India, 11 brands are more than 100 crores. So, can you share something on Brazil, like you know, the skewness towards the top brands? Okay. So, um, essentially the business is fairly, firstly it's a very specialty business. We do only uh, CNS, diabetic and uh, cardio brands. So, about 83% of our prescriptions are generated from specialists. And uh, how we look at it is brands above 20 million reais, so roughly uh, close to 4 million dollars. So, I would say 88% of our business is coming from brands above uh, 20 million reais. And the number of brands that we have over 20 million reais is 10. Okay, understood. Uh, Germany, what is the tender cycle and, uh, you know, what do you mean by being more cost competitive because uh, the manufacturing would be done in India? So, I'm just trying to understand what do you mean by that and what is the tender cycle? So, uh, for the tender market in Germany, uh, let's say there are 10 uh, insurance, uh, state-owned or private, which issue tenders, and uh, the duration of a tender is two years, but each large insurance company will issue tenders three or four times a year for different sets of products. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a perpetual activity, and uh, you, you, you get, uh, so like the largest insurance company is AOK, uh, mm -hmm. they might issue four tenders in the year, and each tender will have a set of products but also they will divide Germany into 25 sectors and you can choose which products and which sectors you want to bid for. Understood. And what do you mean by cost competitive being more cost com competitive? So uh, in the generic generic markets of uh, Germany and the US, uh, one key, uh, I would say, feature to be successful is continuous cost improvement and cost reduction. So, so you have to kind of keep working and improving your cost because the competition is increasing and everybody is doing the same thing. So that's what I mean. So essentially there are ways in pharmaceuticals to improve costs which either come from uh, you know, buying a cheaper API, developing a better route of synthesis or increasing your batch size in your plants or finding uh, you know, shorter manufacturing cycles or doing something where you minimize change over timing. So there are various ways and it's a continuous process. So for Germany, we need to accelerate this cost improvement process so that we can be more competitive in this, uh, I would say, uh, in this market where there are more players than ever before. No, so what I meant was the competitive positioning is deteriorated for us because somebody else with better cost structure, more vertically integrated is beating us or the margins in general because the market is more competitive you might win more tenders, but your margins will be lower versus what they were in the past. So what is the case? So your second uh, statement is correct because any market which has more players, uh, there is obviously higher competition on price which leads to some kind of margin compression. Okay. And US, this 38 crore segment income, is this is part of the US uh, revenue? Correct. Understood. Thank you. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Damyanti Kerai from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is, uh, what are your observations on some of the macro headwinds which is impacting the sector, uh, such as like raw material prices, feed costs, etc.? So, any uh, moderation from uh, last quarter number? Any like any update from your perspective? So, Gamindu, you are asking for a general uh, cost inflation seen uh, on material prices? Uh, yes. Uh, Basis. So we are not seeing a higher cost uh, uh, inflation impact uh, quarter on quarter. Uh, so there has been an impact general increase uh, we are seeing across the raw material prices, but uh, uh, not very significant, I would say. Okay. So from your portfolio or in uh, from market perspective, quarter on quarter, there has been no notable uh, changes? Correct. Okay, and uh, what will be key uh, margin driver from current levels? Because uh, you have already, I guess, uh, reverted back to the normal levels after disruption in the previous quarter. Oh, it's a difficult question, actually, because I think all the levels are more or less there, right? I mean, from April, that's what we had guided. Uh, I think from here, what can really uh, happen, uh, Damianti, is that if the top line growth is better than quarter one, uh, that could uh, enable some operating leverage benefit to play out. Uh, that's one. And then some of, some amount of cost efficiency, which is which is continuously happening, uh, but that that won't be significant, I would say. So it's mostly I the top line growth uh, which will be driving the leverage. Operating leverage, yeah, absolutely. And some amount of cost efficiency uh, may come in uh, quarter on quarter, which may not be that significant. Okay. Uh, my second question is on Brazil market. So, uh, can you update us on your uh, new launches and MR edition plans there? And how should we look at uh, growth uh, perspective in the Brazilian segment? Okay. So, um, uh, in the last six months, uh, we've launched uh, five products uh, in Brazil. And that is a result of the large number of uh, filings and approvals that we've been able to get in Brazil. So just to give you a background, uh, last year we got uh, eight approvals and um, uh, and uh, this year already we've received two approvals in Brazil. So and, uh, currently we have about 11 products which are under approval uh, and we will be making a, a double digit um, uh, number of filings in the current fiscal year in Brazil. So all of that results in a good new product momentum. And uh, we've, we've launched five products in the last six months. Um, just to share with you, two of them are in very fairly large markets. So one is uh, River of the Band, which is about $150 million market. But the level of competition is quite um, high. We have 11 branded generic players that we are competing with. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, secondly, we, we launched in CNS a very large uh, product called Dix, Dix Vanilla Vaccine. Um, again, the number of players is 11. Uh, so, which uh, is, a, is a fairly large number going by historical trends. Uh, but given uh, our past track record on, on, in these areas, uh, I, I would not be pessimistic. Uh, we also, so we, we generally target a market share in branded generics close to double digit at the end of the 12 month period. It's a, it's a kind of a generic statement I'm making. Uh, and as the quarters go by, we will communicate on market shares uh, as to how they are progressing. Right now, it's too early. So most of the new launches have been between November and April, and our market shares are less than 5%. Uh, so so it's, uh, it's kind of too early to comment, but we'll see how it goes from there. So in uh, new launches, which you have done in last six months, you said a market share is currently around 5% or lesser, and here you expect a pickup to happen in coming quarters or so. But in the uh, established products, uh, market share will be in the double digits. In the in the the core products like the products that where we are, our market shares uh, are, are um, actually pretty. Um, I mean, we have to look at product by product. But the minimum threshold for to be a lead build brand in our company uh, is at least 15 percent market share, and um, uh, so we we, um, we we have that threshold in quite a few products. And I was mentioning that earlier in the call that um, you know one way we measure products is how many of them do more than uh, 20 million reais, which is close to $4 million, 
of revenue in a year, and uh, we have a fairly large number of such grants, close to 10. Got it. And in terms of growth, uh, any uh, indication? Like I think the IMS uh, reflects fairly well the growth of Torrent. Uh, it's a little hard if you look at primary sales quarter on quarter because the stocking, the stocking um, impacts it. But like I mentioned, IMS is showing a 13% growth for uh, Torrent, branded generic business, um, and which is, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, I would say, a, a reasonable expectation you can have. Okay, sure. Thank you. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saran Mukherjee from Namura. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my question. Just continuing on uh, uh, Brazil, uh, you know, in the branded market, you are focusing on the specialty of CNS, diabetes, cardio. So how large is this market and how are you positioned, in, you know, in, in this uh, market and how much of the market you currently cover? So our coverage in this market is currently around 22-23%, and uh, we are aiming to double it in the next three years. So that's uh, that's a good. I mean, that's where we are targeting, and that's where the new launches come in. So we are playing in a narrow, a narrow, let's say, space in this market. But uh, we are playing in a, let's say, more recent products, uh, and we we have a, a good track record of doctor relationships and prescriptions here. Uh, so, uh, I'm sorry, you said something else you wanted to know. So, yeah, so just one thing on the, uh, what's the size of the market? Uh, I mean, these three therapy segments, and what would be your position in the market, in the branded generics in these three segments? Like, what would be your rank in the market? So, if I take uh, the overall, uh, uh, let's say, therapeutic area of, uh, I don't know, uh, if I take the, um, the overall area of uh, cardio, diabetes, and uh, uh, and CNS, uh, uh, the the market. Um, I, I I mean I, I would say the overall market size. I, I don't have the figure with me, so I will revert to you. Uh, the overall uh, branded genetics market is roughly twenty billion dollars, and a good portion of it. Um, I just don't have the the data in front of me. Uh, the market, this covered market, is growing currently at about five percent. And Torrent's growth in this uh, this area is about 13.7 percent. So in um, in the last quarter, so we're going pretty fast. I'll revert. I'll just come back to you. Give me a few minutes. I'll come back later in the call about what is the exact size of these areas. Sure, sure. And you, would you know the rank? Like you know, would be the top 10 player, or you know, what would be your rank in this? Uh, I mean, how uh, based on yeah, the market? Sure. So currently, our rank in the therapeutic area of cardio, diabetes, and CNS is 10. Our overall rank in Brazil is uh, 20. Understood. Uh, so, there on this 38 crore of other operating income that you mentioned about settlement, can you give some color? Because typically we don't see this kind of. Is it like some kind of payment you received or some kind of a litigation? If you can give some color. So, these are not litigation related uh, settlement income. Huh? This was basically uh, one of the uh, uh, patent assignment which we had done earlier, uh, somewhere in 2010-2011. Uh, so there were certain uh, milestones uh, which were defined uh, based on certain events, and uh, that event happened, and therefore the milestone got triggered. Understood. Okay. Okay. And just one final question, Amman. You know, there has been this news of Torrent Group entering into the diagnostic space. We have seen other pharma companies uh, getting there, leveraging their pharmaceutical franchise. So why it's not being done through the you know the the domestic formulation business? Uh, if you see synergies, you know, for for a diagnostic uh, rollout there. So. Uh, yeah, firstly, as you said, you're right that this is a group level venture and not a Torrent Pharma venture. And uh, the kind of overall skill set required for this business, uh, only a small part of it has to do with the field force and uh, existing customer relations. A large part of it has to do with operations and back end processing, which requires a whole different kind of team and uh, investment mindset. So that's why we haven't really uh, considered having it part of the pharma company. But do you think, or at a later stage, do you think it would make sense to integrate? Uh, because you already have a large presence uh, in the, on the pharma side and you have the doctor connect. No, that's not the plan as of now. Okay. Okay, thanks. 
So just to complete what I was saying earlier, uh, the size of the CNS market is 8 billion years. Uh, diabetes is about 8 and cardio is also close to 7, seven between 7 and 8. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karthik Mehta from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, I'm from Clay Capital. This is Karthik here. Yeah, hi. I have a question on the... Hello? Am I audible? Hello? Hello? Yes, please go ahead. We can hear you. Yeah, this is on India business. This is a, a slightly longer term question. Uh, you have acquired a, a few products from uh, uh, from a pharma company in India very recently. Uh, so, if we have to look at it from your perspective for India business two three years and beyond, uh, do you feel that there are so lesser opportunities of uh, of larger size, or due to issues of let's say valuation or uh, product mix, et cetera, wherein, uh, wherein which you have to acquire smaller businesses and uh, must scale them up. This is only for the India business. Hello? Yeah. No, but, so inorganic remains the kind of uh, core focus for us as we go along now that we've uh, successfully integrated the, the Unicam acquisition and, uh, uh, you know, have uh, also uh, taken over the brands of uh, four of the brands from Dr. Reddy's in the previous yeah. quarter. Uh, so uh, it's not about size, it's really about the strategic fit and uh, any kind of small to mid-size or mid, uh, mid-size acquisition is something that we're open for in the next uh, couple of years. Yeah, so which I understand and we are not, uh, I mean, yeah, all the assets that you've acquired in the past have uh, been very well integrated. Uh, we're not uh, talking about uh, uh, the ability to do that again. Uh, with the India business top line that you have now, acquiring smaller assets will take a fair amount of time effort from the top uh, from the top management and there will be a lot of investments required on the ground. In the past when you have acquired inefficient businesses or uh, businesses which had uh, lower investments from us to owners, where you were able to turn around. So we are talking about a different thing here. If you do this, is it fair to assume that uh, you will acquire a lot of these assets and in the interim uh, your profitability, uh, I mean, you, you will be acquiring it at, uh, you will be building it at your cost, but um, the ROI, ROE, whichever matrix you use, uh, will take some amount of time for uh, us to see. Karthik, uh, if, if these are uh, uh, brands which are being acquired and uh, goes and sits in existing division, then I think the return profile would be much better, right? I mean, because you are taking some brands and the gross margin is driving your overall uh, profitability, right? So that's something which plays out. And same thing is happening as far as those DRL brands are concerned. Yes. Where you acquire a new division, it goes and sits in some existing division. So that way, these kind of acquisition, which fills up the uh, pr product portfolio gaps and uh, 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 certain things uh, which uh, we are looking at uh, in, term, in terms of, uh, you know, smaller therapies uh, we want to enter, so on and so forth, I think this should be, this should be uh, 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 bottom line positive, uh, Karthik. Yeah, yeah, which, which I understand. So, uh, I mean, is this done because, again, just to ask for, uh, just to repeat my question in case I was not clear. Is this uh, something we are looking at because uh, the, the larger or the more attractive assets are, are still not available at, uh, uh, at the right value or uh, probably here uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, you, uh, you see um, some amount of opportunity here? I'm just I think, I think that's too trying to look at here. Yeah. It's too speculative in nature to comment on, uh, So, but at least the only kind of guidance that we can give on this point is that uh, 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 an acquisition size, uh, something that was uh, of the size of Unicam relative to a market share uh, four years ago, uh, opportunities of that scale, if they come up, we will certainly be evaluating them. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from DAM Capital. Please go ahead. All right. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, Sudhir, you mentioned that the U.S. plants are currently operating at 54% capacity utilization. Uh, so, you know, can you give us a sense of maybe the, you know, the under, if there is a, if there is any uh, element of under recovery in these plants at this point of time? Yeah. So, uh, just uh, correction to be made. I said all the facilities in India put together, the capacity utilization is 54. So, it's not only for the U.S. facilities which we are talking about, right? Uh, but having said so, um, uh, I mean, I mean, what we try and do, Nitin, is uh, on a continuous basis evaluate uh, uh, and uh, try and trim the capacities which are there, uh, so that you know wherever possible, wherever there are pockets of cost optimization, uh, we keep on doing that. Uh, so for me to say there's still underabsorbed overheads which are still uh, there in the P&L, uh, maybe no uh, at this point in time. After we've done all those things, uh, starting quarter four of last year. And uh, so from uh, increasing the capacity utilization, uh, you know, the, the drivers would be what, the U.S. and the German business or any other businesses also can meaningfully impact this? No, absolutely. I'm with you on that. The volumes can come only from the generic side, which is Germany and uh, U.S. Okay. And secondly, Aman, on the India business, how, uh, can you just give us some sense of your new product launch plans for, for the year? Yeah, so... Uh, Q1 new products have contributed to 3% uh, growth uh, overall. Uh, some of the, the bigger contributors here have been from the CNS and Gastro brands, uh, which were launched uh, in probably the latter half of the of last year of, uh, or January this year. Uh, going ahead, of course, there's the wave of launches. Uh, one of them has already happened in uh, first week of July, Sita uh, Glipton. Uh, there's a few more cardiac launches coming up uh, in the second and third quarters. And uh, additionally, we have some product extensions coming up uh, for the rest of the year. So about uh, seven to eight products per quarter is what we're looking at in India. Seven to eight per, uh, products per quarter going forward? Yeah. And... Uh, 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 and on, uh, on, on the Sita Glipton market, uh, I mean, in your assessment, uh, I mean... How is that played out, and does it give us is it a and does it give a sense of how some of these incremental uh, diabetes oral diabetic product uh, you know, pit, pit expiration is going to play out? So obviously this is a, a competitive market, uh, so it's hard to say how uh, you know quickly the share is shifting to the new launched uh, brands. But uh, our, our recent launches in diabetes have been uh, fairly positive indicators of our performance. Uh, Wilda Glipton, to name one example. So we hope that at least our market share should be uh, somewhat in the range of uh, those recent diabetes launches. And similar for cardiac uh, going ahead. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sham. Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening and uh, thank you for taking my question. Just the first one on the medical representatives. I think we have added 300 for the quarter. Last quarter we added 300. It was 600. So are we done in terms of the MR additions? Uh, I, I remember you said it's for the new launches that are coming in the pipeline. So are we right-sized, if I can use the word? Uh, and if you can talk about uh, how some of these MRs are actually, or the first quarter, or at least the previous quarter ones, how are they integrating? Yeah, so the the integration has been completed now, uh, 600 reps uh, in the last two quarters, and our new divisions are all in place, and the new products uh, have also been launched in these divisions. So uh, early to say right now, but uh, in terms of the launch plan and MR integration plan, things are on track. Uh, going ahead from here, it will only be incremental expansion that we see for the rest of the year, uh, if at all needed, which will be reviewing probably every quarter or so, but that would be small numbers compared to what we've uh, done so far. Uh, and in terms of the cost of the MRs, uh, when I look at 1Q, you think most of those expenses or there is like a, maybe they got added later half of the quarter, how should we think of the cost bit of it? I think substantially in the quarter, huh? Okay. Okay. 
that's that's helpful. Uh, just going back to your previous quarter guidance of uh, the 300 basis points of margin expansion from 26, I'm just trying to see what has played through and what has not. I remember we had the 150 basis points that was coming from the Levitown shutdown, that's the fixed cost there. Uh, we also have higher MRs. We have had this 5 million payment that has come through. So if you could kind of help us understand how much of that organic has come through, uh, Sudhir, and maybe what is pending, or we think the 30 and a half is the level that we need to kind of keep in mind. No, no, uh, Sham, uh, all those factors which have been talked about, uh, which is what uh, uh, the price increase benefit starting from April for the branded businesses, that, that started playing out. The other what we had said is we had carried out a cost optimization at uh, our plants in India uh, by maximizing at one side and bringing down the uh, shift working on the other side. Uh, that's implemented, so that's playing out. Uh, the Levittown um, uh, cash burnout which was there uh, has already started uh, uh, coming into the margins. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say largely everything playing together except for the freight expenses where uh, the impact in quarter 3 and quarter 4 was also around 1, 1.2%. There's some amount of um, um, uh, recovery which is uh, seen in quarter 1. Uh, but still, uh, there's good amount of uh, room to uh, improve uh, on that. Got it. So there is still upside, you think? You think just from that particular last bit that you just called out? Yeah, but um, uh, Sham, uh, I would still wait uh, for that to happen before we really start talking about it. But yes, we've seen a small recovery happening in the freight expenses. Fair enough. Uh, just the last question on just going back to the German tenders, uh, you know, you've done the, again, some kind of a restructuring, you looked at cost options. So what gives us the confidence that from Q3, I think you've got everything right? Uh, and also, can you comment on the competitors? Are these like Indian, large Indian manufacturers that you're competing against? So what gives us the right to win against them now versus, say, non-Indian manufacturers? So... Uh uh, no, I won't say that everything is behind us. Cost optimization is a permanent exercise. Uh, maybe we have fallen a little bit behind, uh, but what I was saying is that uh, we would be caught up on a set of products uh, where we expect to, to win the tenders. Uh, in terms of competitors in Germany, uh, the biggest competitors are the lo uh, large local companies. So Sandoz uh, through Hexal, Teva uh, through a German uh, affiliate and uh, Zentiva. Those are the three big, I would say, gorillas in the, um, in, the, uh, uh, in the German market. What we are seeing uh, is an influx of uh, players from India. So legacy players are Aurobindo and Dr. Reddy uh, from the acquisitions that they've made in the European space. And then you have a newer crop of companies uh, who are coming. But so far, I would say the highest uh, market share that I've seen uh, uh, Indian companies achieve is close to 3%. Uh, Torrent's market share is usually between 6 and 7 percent, and the large, uh, larger three players have a market share in Germany closer to 10 to 12 percent. Uh, Torrent is ranked number five in Germany uh, with a 6 to 7 percent market share. Uh, so, uh, so you know, we, we have won a few tenders uh, that, whose impact will start to come in uh, October out onwards. So that was the guidance I was giving because uh, these tenders get renewed every two years. So we had, uh, in the last round for these particular tenders, we had incremental wins as compared to what was the run rate in the past. And this incremental wins uh, would start to show in our numbers from Q3 onwards. Got it. Very helpful and all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Axis Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, just a couple of clarifications. So the U.S. business, twin queues actually come down, right? If we remove that 38 crores, which is about six seven million dollars, so it would have come down a bit. Correct. For the last quarter. So the gap sell opportunity is uh, coming down. So the base business would be what 32, 30, 30, 32 billion dollars. I, I I would not say that. Uh, I would say that the the business has come down a little bit. To a large extent, uh, uh, from price erosion, 
and uh, compensated handsomely by Dapson. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, and and uh, moving into margin lever, so you uh, be mentioned about uh, you know that you know if we exclude that 38 crores again, it's 29.2, which is 300 basis point improvement, uh, and we are there. But in the past, we were at 31 percent also. So uh, so little bit on the freight, but operating leverage is something which can clearly kick in. Uh, so what what is the time period you're talking about moving to 30 first and then 31 as seen in the past? Uh, uh, Prakash, I think I, I would be able to give respond to that question maybe one quarter down the line. Okay, okay. And, and, and lastly, on the MA side, uh, in the past you have talked about net debt to EBITDA around one. You usually get comfortable in looking at assets. You you've done smaller deals. Uh, how's the uh, you know uh, environment or the you know the uh, what do you call? Uh, the M&A side assets uh, are the assets available? Is it the stretch? That's why you are you know waiting and seeing for the right opportunity, or you already have few assets which you are looking at. No, I, I think uh, Prakash, uh, as as far as the uh, leveraging leverage is concerned, uh, I think we should be uh, 30th June. We should be around 1.2x, right? And that that gives us enough room. Uh, from a balance sheet perspective, to look at good assets. Huh? So uh, all the assets which are there in the market, we do have a look at uh, those assets, uh, no doubt about it. But if something is going to play out, uh, only time can uh, uh, tell us that. Okay, and lastly for Aman, uh, uh, Vilda, you uh, fairly successful uh, top three, the top three, top five generic players. In that molecule, how is CETA as a market competition playing out? Is it more competitive, uh, or, or is it similar to Wilda? And do you expect some, uh, you know, uh, cannibalization in Wilda as well? So it's uh, very early days, only 20 days since launch. Uh, so let's wait for the AIS3 data to be out in August. But uh, at first glance, it does seem that it's uh, probably a bit more competitive than the Wilda launch. Uh, so probably better to see how uh, our performance has been in the end of the July data set. Okay, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anubhav Agarwal from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Yeah, a uh, question on the Brazil market. Uh, when we see this quarter, let's say excluding the tender business, we've grown about 10%. Uh, would you just break it up between volume and uh, uh, price? Sure. So um, essentially, the, the in uh, April of this year, in April of this year, the, uh, the government, as usual, announced the price increases. So this year, we had uh, inflation adjusted price increase. Uh, the pharmaceutical market for, is divided into three categories uh, in terms of the level of competition that exists in Brazil. For the first time, we saw that uh, uh, the price increases allotted by the government was 10.83% for all the three categories. Uh, so there is a strong recognition on part of the authorities about the inflation component in our business, and uh, it was uh, reflected in the price increase that was granted. So price is playing an important factor uh, in our business uh, in Brazil. And uh, then the second component which is played out for us uh, is the new product launches. Uh, and uh, volume in this particular quarter, I would say, is uh, not growing much. And the reason for that is uh, usually when we look at uh, sales, sales in Q1 get impacted, particularly in April, from the high stocking that uh, wholesalers do uh, in anticipation of price increases. So the business model of wholesalers, it usually takes into account uh, this type of a trading profit, and they try to buy as much as they can in March so that they can uh, take the price increase on the inventories. And uh, we uh, we control that, but to some extent it's part of the partnership uh, um, uh, uh, partnership that we have with wholesalers as to we have to let them buy some more in, uh, in March and agree to sell less in April. Uh, so far in Q1, you also don't see the full benefit of the price increase that we've taken on uh, the majority of our portfolio. So as we go forward, you'll see the growth trend in volume and new product terms uh, normalize and uh, 
come to reflect more closely what you see in IML. So that's why I think it's, a, it's kind of a, uh, it's hard to judge one quarter's performance based on internal sales, uh, or, I mean primary sales in, in Brazil. It's better to use uh, secondary sales uh, for a general evaluation of the trend of business. So uh, Sanjay, uh, for the rest of the year, uh, what kind of price increase at the portfolio level? Are we talking about uh, close to 10% or m m close to 5 6%? What kind of price increase at the portfolio level you've taken? So I would say that uh, generally it's uh, similar to in India uh, in the sense that what you do is uh, you evaluate the competitive scenario for each uh, molecule. So I'll give, a, give you an example. So we, we launched River of Saban, right, which is a big market. It used to be 800 million reais. But what happened is uh, that we saw the, the new competitors come in until they reached 11 in terms of branded generics. And the competitors would, uh, would you know, have their own pricing strategies. So we have to remain cognizant of it while we are doing pricing actions. So, so we don't necessarily take the price increase allotted by the government on all our products. Generally, our price increase on our, across the portfolio would be between 5 to 10%. And in the past, uh, uh, with the new product uh, momentum, uh, volume growth you will expect to be uh, high single digit to double digit here? Uh, in terms of overall growth? For the full year, yeah. just the volume growth. Uh, no, I, I would not give you guidance on volume uh, and, uh, you know, the split. But our volume growth would be in line with the market or greater than the market. And uh, overall, our, our growth would be in the high, high double digit. I, I mean, double digit figures. Okay, and you mentioned about uh, ex expanding your coverage, uh, uh, doubling your coverage in the next two, three years. So are you thinking of going beyond these three areas you presented right now, cardiac, CNS, and diabetes, to s introduce some more therapies, or only within these th three areas you want to double your coverage? So actually I'm following Aman's footsteps. So essentially what we will do is we will expand our coverage over a period of time. So I'll give you an example. We set up a brand new oncology facility in uh, in the in India. Uh, so ideally, I would like to leverage this facility for our business in Brazil also. So it's a it's a progressive uh, journey, but we would be expanding, but remaining very close to specialty therapeutic areas, which require you know lesser of a footfall, and but it also allows us to expand in uh, institutional business. Okay, so basically, but largely it looks like from the current areas, uh, what's your MR field force in Brazil right now? Uh, right now we have two teams. Uh, this is the operator. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you all to please stay connected while we reconnect the management line. Thank you for patiently waiting. The line for the management is reconnected. Thank you, and over to you. Mr. Agarwal, please go ahead. Yes, uh, since uh, you are answering that question on the MR uh, field force in Brazil right now. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, where did we get cut off? Uh, you were just about to mention about you have two teams in Brazil. Oh, yeah, so we have two teams. Uh, size of a team is generally between 110 and 120 people. And uh, so over a period of time, uh, so, you know, without going into specifics, uh, we would need to add additional field forces in Brazil. But uh, we, we, we do it in a conservative way. So we would do partial increases uh, and get some results and then expand into other parts of the country. So our, our I would say, in a three- to five-year objective would be to have a full uh, double teams in CNS and cardio. Okay, just last question on the India business, Aman. The 600 people you added, you started new divisions. How many divisions you put in place here? And are these largely promoting new products or a combination of, uh, 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 I mean, there will be some mix, but largely new products or uh, largely existing products? You mean how many new divisions? Yeah. Two new divisions, and uh, it's a mix of both. We've shifted some of our existing brands into the new divisions as well. So it's kind of spread across existing plus new divisions. 
and which divisions uh, are targeting which uh, therapy areas largely? So across uh, CVD and uh, CNS. Thank you. Well, is that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of San Mukherjee from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yes, thanks for the follow-up. Uh, so, you know, on the uh, PLI scheme, uh, the incentive, uh, which it starts from FI23, so how should we think about the incentive? Uh, will it be front-loaded, evenly spread over five years? And uh, has that started already kicking in in the numbers? Uh, yes, but the number is uh, quite insignificant uh, in quarter one. Uh, so as we go quarter on quarter, I think the numbers will keep on increasing. Okay. So the number on an average is around 150, 160 crore, right? Mm-hmm. That's the potential, uh, sign, uh, but we'll have to see how much you are eligible for based on the incremental sales on the approved products which you can get. Mm-hmm. So it just started, it's too early to talk about it. Maybe one or two quarters down the line, we can try and give you a color around it. Okay, so first year it will not be significant in your view? Uh, it's a very small number. Okay, okay. 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 understood. And, and, and just one more uh, on the uh, trade generics part. So how is that still, you know, updated? What's the Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Mukherjee. The audio is breaking from your line. Please check. Yeah. Is it better? Is it better? Yeah. Yeah. So I was asking on the trade generic. So what's the contribution now in the overall uh, numbers for India? The contribution would be around 2.5%. Uh, so as the base has gone up for the overall India business, uh, uh, it's around this range of two and a half, uh, but the trade generics business itself is growing quite uh, substantially. So we expect that uh, over the next few quarters, it should increase in contribution from here as well, a little bit more from here. Yeah, have you, have, Aman, have you shared any number in terms of what is the expectation, like where you want this number, where this number would be eventually? No, we haven't shared anything, and uh, I, I believe that it's uh, a bit still uh, premature to say on what kind of. Uh, uh, ambition we have yet, but uh, as of now, we are quite uh, uh, confident of maintaining this level of contribution and increasing probably incrementally from here. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neha Manpuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Birish Patak from White Oak Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks again. Uh, on other countries, I have an understanding that uh, UK and Philippines are a large part of that. But outside of that, which are the other bigger countries? And just giving a better understanding of some of those. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, in terms of uh, revenue, uh, UK uh, and uh, Philippines... But also Mexico is on the same uh, same type of size. Uh, so you're talking about countries with revenues of uh, uh, Philippines might be a little bigger, but mostly between 10 to 20 million dollars a year. So okay. So then so then there will be a, like a long, uh, you know, good enough tail of countries because UK Philippines are like 150 CR each, and the total size of other countries is close to like a thousand crores. So then you have and Mexico is only. I think 70, 80 crores. So then you'll have a bunch of, and these will be largely distributor-led, or you have your, you know, branded presence in these countries. Presence outside of our four major geographies is fairly concentrated. So let's say that uh, in the rest of the uh, world countries, uh, we focus on uh, seven major markets, uh, which are all branded generic. It's, uh, and we have uh, boots on the ground, and uh, usually these uh, boots on the ground are either torrent employees or through distributors. Uh, in countries like uh, UK, Mexico, we built up our own subsidiaries. Uh, for example, I can share with you, in Mexico, we have uh, close to uh, 50 uh, reps uh, in the CNS space, and we're building a specialty company in CNS, uh, which is growing quite well, but it is still, let's say, uh, in between 10 to $50 million a year. And, uh, you know, we, we are trying to build a future Brazil for torrent in Mexico. In uh, ballpark, uh, Mexican market is 50% of the Brazilian market. 
So there's no reason why in a few years' time down the road we cannot have a, a $50 million business in Mexico. At least that's the type of ambition that we fix for ourselves. So we're working on it behind the scenes. And I think as, as it grows, the uh, invisibility, we will communicate more about these markets. But it's a focused effort. It's not a 50 market effort. It's a focused effort in ROW around a few key strategic markets where we are making investments. And the rest of it is just incremental where we partner or distribute our products. Okay. So UK, Philippines, Russia, Mexico, Malaysia. These are the five. Which would be the other two? Sorry. Uh, no. So there's also, there used to be Sri Lanka <laughs> until very recently <laughs> where... So uh, I, I won't comment upon that. But for us, like uh, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, even Nepal is an important market for us, uh, which we consider in this area, Sri Lanka, uh, and uh, a couple of others. Okay. Now, one last question. The Brazil, uh, like you said, for you, this 12% generic and 88% uh, branded and zero tender. But for the market, uh, let's say your covered market, uh, which is CNS Diabetes Cardio, what would that mix be? It will be roughly similar or it will be more, you know, more tender and more generic and less branded? So it's kind of a little, little bit, uh, little bit, uh, what happens is that the volume in branded generics and generics are fairly similar, but the values are very different. So I, I'll give you an idea about the size of the overall Brazilian market. So in terms of uh, branded generics, the size of the market is roughly 42 billion AIs. Yeah. So and in terms of the generic market in Brazil, it's about 12 billion AIs. But also the marketing structures are very different. So in branded generics, you have reps and all kinds of marketing expenses. In generics, you have a very small team. So it's not, uh, you know, when you're looking at these businesses, the bottom line might be the same. Mm -hmm. Because you're operating different businesses with different economies, uh, and you have to learn to operate them uh, uh, in an efficient way. the size of the tender market, or that is included in the generic 12 billion real that you told? So tender market uh, is a separate market which is uh, classified under hospitals and tenders, and it's roughly 40 million uh, billion reais. So that's why into hospital and tender. Billion. Okay. 40 billion, and the retail market is about 90 billion. Understood. Understood. This is for the overall market, but like your targeted therapies would have a similar mix. I'm assuming, you know, like so tender, or tender would be lesser in that. Uh, no, the the tender is a, the separate component which I put you in the tender and hospital market. Uh, it's a tender is for government hospitals, private hospitals, municipal, district level, state government hospitals. So usually uh, that is the business. Uh, so the so business reason I'm asking is some years back there was this thing, right, where government had run a program and they were giving certain medicines. I'm forgetting the name of the program. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's for pharmacy of popular. Program. Uh -huh. so, so what happened to that, and is that has it gained more popularity or something like that? Or? No, no, no. They became a victim of government budgetary constraints. So it still exists, and but the portfolio of products which are in it are fairly limited, and uh, it, 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 it is subject to the vagaries of government uh, government budget allocations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sanjay Gupta for closing comments. So uh, I, I'd just like to close today's uh, conference call by thanking all of you for your interest in Torrent, uh, for the insightful questions, and uh, we hope to keep the dialogue going and we'll be available to our investor relations group. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Torrent Pharmaceuticals Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.